You are a design student and soon becoming a designer. You need a portfolio, but how do you make one? How do you get started? How much time do you have? How much can you afford spending on a portfolio? Yeah, so many questions, right? In this video, I'll try to answer as many as I could. We're gonna run through a list of options of platforms or tools that you can choose from to build your first portfolio or at least get you started. Depending on the situation you're in, you might pick one over the other. So I hope we can go through all of those in 10 minutes. So let's get the party started. Morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. It's now 2021, there are just so many ways to start your UX design, product design, portfolio website right now and they can be so cheap. The barrier of entry is so low right now, there's no excuse not setting yours up ASAP. I'm going to cover several options and some of them I might have used them personally so I have some first-hand experiences or some of them that I know because they're kind of the like industry standard that I've seen many applicants are using nowadays so some of them will be like Oh, I know this one Some of them will be like mm, Okay, that's fair, that seems legit And some of them you'll be like Oh, I didn't know that's possible there should be at least one that you might find surprising. Well, that's me, surprise and delight. Here's a breakdown for this video. I'm gonna briefly go over the first three things, the content format, website hosting, the website URL or the link of your portfolio website. Lastly, I'm gonna present five big categories of tools, platforms, and what options you have that you can actually start putting your content in. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Here we go, number one content format and as you know the main content on your portfolio website is going to be your project within your projects the primary focus or the primary content i have to say it has to be images and of course images are way more important and way more compelling than text if you look at some of the great portfolios they are mainly images they are barely any texts text is necessary it's just not the main focus. For example, you might need to write about your problem statement. What is this design solving? Sometimes it might be better to just present your problem statement in pure text, maybe just one line or two line, really concisely, clearly describe and summarize what problem your design is solving. Of course, your role, what do you do in this project? Are you the only designer doing everything? Research, design, prototyping, testing? Or you're just focusing on one part of the design and maybe the duration of project. This project takes up three months, three weeks. What is that timeline? What is that time frame for this project? And then next could be MP4 or GIF to show the experience of your design, show the trajectory. So any time-based element because if you use pure images, it's really hard to capture any time-related aspect of your design. So you can show more information, show more details, show more craft, show more care, and maybe even your product demo, your design demo. You have a prototype, you, have a, you take a video, record it to really showcase your concept. Speaking of prototypes, what is better than letting your audience experience your design by themselves by interacting with your prototypes. If you build it, then just include it in your portfolio. So it's better than just letting them watch your portfolio. Just let them experience it. Let them tap, let them double click, let them drag and drop, let them swipe, let them experience your design. The next will be the hosting service. What hosting is, is basically storing the content type, the content format that we just talked about, the text, your PNG, JPEG, your GIF, animation, prototype, and before, you have to store those files somewhere, right? So that people can access them. You might consider your hosting service more if you plan to code your website from scratch, like me. But most of the time, if you're just using some standard, very accessible, very common website builders, you probably don't need to care about this too much, which I'm gonna cover very soon. And next will be the link, your URL. That's the HTTP web address that you share to people, share to recruiters, hiring manager, to any internships, job applications, so that they can access your content, access your projects, your portfolio. Unlike the hosting service, your URL is something that you will need because it represents you, it's the link 
to who you are as a designer. So that's something that you will probably pay for it. It's pretty simple, straightforward. It's not too expensive overall. You do not really need to spend too much time on picking the perfect domain name. If your name .com is taken, maybe dot design or dot me or dot something else. As long as it's not super weird or create a second interpretation of some random things, it should be okay. A general rule of thumb is just to keep it simple and neutral and you should be very safe. All right, number four, the five big categories of platforms and tools that you can use to set up to build your portfolio. So I'm gonna go from the easiest to the hardest. So you have a range of options and within each category, there are also some subcategories that you can take a look at. So first and foremost, the easiest one, it might be Figma. Yes, you heard it right, Figma. The tool that you might be already using in your day-to-day -day design work in school or in your UX program. Working in Silicon Valley, I have first-hand experience seeing and witnessing designers use Figma to present their ideas, their concepts, or uh, design reviews. And I also have seen some designers use Figma to present their portfolio in a on-site in an one-on-one -on -one interviews. So it's legit, you can totally do that. If you are designing in Figma already, well, one big pro for you is that you can just copy and paste your design work from one Figma project to another, to your portfolio project. There's no JPEG, PNG export necessary because you're working in the same environment, the same tool, the same platform. Putting together a portfolio can be really fast. And according to this article, there is a lot of flexibility and support using Figma as a presentation, as a portfolio tool, which makes Figma a very good candidate, a very good choice over other options I will cover later. It can support things like drag interaction, scroll, GIF animation, and even a delay interaction, which sounds pretty cool to me. I personally do not use Figma because I already know how to code. I have been coding my portfolio since day one of my designer career. That's the main reason I did not further investigate into Figma as a presentation tool. But if you're new, totally check it out. Just a disclaimer, Figma does not sponsor me for this video. So Figma, somehow if you see this video, feel free to uh, sponsor me. Next is a slide deck, a presentation deck, PowerPoint type of thing. So within this category, there are a few ways you can do it. One is through Google Slide. As you might already know, Google Slide is online, it's cloud-based. So you can update your portfolio as often as you could and it's really fast. You don't need to upload or re-upload anything. You probably just drag and drop images and the changes will be reflected immediately. I personally will not use Google Slide because I don't find it very easy to use. It's not very user-friendly to me. But if you are a pro at Google Slide, go for it. Next option is you can totally reappropriate your school presentation, your PDF as your portfolio. If you go to a design school or design program, I'm sure you need to present the project that you design and then you probably will have a PDF version of your presentation and you're gonna click through them. If not, you might have a keynote so if you have a keynote, you can totally hit export into PDF, turn your entire keynote into a PDF. But no matter what you present, you can totally turn it into a PDF. That could actually work pretty well. And I think that it might be a better option than Google Slide. Next, number three. This is also an easy one. Blogs. Yes, literally the blogs that you typically write your blogs in. So the first blog option Media. No surprise, it's very common. You might have read some Medium articles already in which you will see images and text, which you know is the main content format of your project. And the Medium design team are pretty good at framing their content in a clean, straightforward way, a linear scroll, nothing complicated. They support image, they support BNG, JPEG, text, I think even GIF animations. Basically everything that you will need to put a project together really quickly you just have to drop all the images and write up the text, done. Next is Blogger. Not that I highly recommend it, it's just I have used this before. It seems straightforward, simple. If you are really familiar with it, you know how to use it, you can edit things really quickly, then use it. 
for me it's just i feel like it's a little bit outdated and the ui is a little ugly so i would prefer medium over this one but it's an option if you want to use it another option could be notion honestly i did not think about notion could be a possible portfolio site until somebody pointed it out so shout out to you considering the fact that you can support images tags links and you can share that page publicly then i don't see why not it couldn't be a portfolio site if you like using notion you're good at using notion you know all the shortcuts and tricks and get your stuff up and running really quickly use it next is website builders there are just so many of them i'm going to go through a few of them first and then i'm going to give you my take and my recommended approach here are a few common ones that you might know squarespace wordpress cargo collective wix i have used all of them i've played with all of them to be honest in 2021 they are fairly similar to each other they have a lot of templates you can choose from you can buy the ones that you like you can have some customization on the layout the text the font the color background the banner images i don't particularly recommend one over the other just because like i said they're fairly similar at this point so from that perspective it comes down to your personal preference but of course there's another factor the usability some of them might be easier to use than the other personally i do not know too much of them at this point because once i made up my mind i'm going to code my website from scratch i just stopped looking at those options if you just want to get together your first portfolio then just look at which one is the easiest one to use which one is the most user friendly so that you can upload your images your text your animation gif links really easily really fast and then you can take a look at the free templates that each platform offers and see which one you like and go from there next website builder this one is a little bit more complicated at least when i was playing with it it's called dream weaver it used to be one of the adobe products i don't know if it still exists but at least when i was trying to weave my dream it weaved my dream to confusion so i ditched it but the concept is pretty interesting you put together your design on one screen and then it will get translated into html css and javascript yeah that's all i know another one is called webflow it seems like it's a better version of dreamweaver it's pretty new i don't know if i like it i tried to mess with it for five minutes maybe one minute it looks like it's very powerful it supports a lot of lot of custom interactions and visual treatment that you want your website to to move or behave like this one definitely fall on the advanced side among all the website builders it seems more complicated than it needs to be just to be fair this is my impression of this tool with me spending a minute or two playing with it i don't know too much about it it seems like the learning curve could be a little steep for beginners so if you feel like adventurous and go for more advanced route definitely check it out spend two hours maybe follow tutorials and learn about it and see how you feel but for beginners maybe squarespace is a better choice just because it's easy to use and learn compared to webflow so my take and recommended approach for beginners don't pay for any templates yet don't let those fancy visuals and template distract you blind you or steal your valuable time just stick with the free and decent looking one it's already a good first step remember picking your first website builder is not a destination it's just a foot in the door it's just the beginning and you can always change your templates later once you have the content ready if you don't kill your temptation to shop for templates you will get stuck into this infinite loop of browsing really pretty fancy interesting visuals i know that because i got stuck there for a little while so don't repeat my mistake for now the most most urgent thing that you need to do is to put your content together and picking a website builder is just so that you can put the content together so the last option code your portfolio website from scratch it might sound intimidating but it doesn't have to be because there are two ways to do this one you can find some really nice html5 templates they're free they're online they're everywhere you just use the template learn about how the basic html css javascript syntax looks then you can just link your images and text to it put all those into a hosting service and then you're good to go you're basically coding your website without coding website and over time as you learn more about html css and javascript you can modify the template to suit your own taste your style that 
whatever you want to represent or you want to showcase in your portfolio. So that you get to learn a bit about the coding skills and also to have more customization, more creative control about your portfolio. I do have friends doing it this way, so they get these benefits. Last one by far, the most complicated one, and of course the most difficult one that I know of, maybe the most scary path. You completely code your website from scratch. It's definitely a huge undertaking. First, it would take a lot of time to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, like really fundamentally. So that you can start putting your website together. And then you have to design your portfolio. How many pages, what do they look like, how are they laid out. Then you have to work on your project so that you can put on that portfolio. And then the compound of the three, it really drained your time. At least it drained a lot of my time in college. So it really costs a lot of time and appetite to learn. Since I code my website from scratch, I don't use website builders, I have to take care of web hosting myself. So I have to go find web hosting, see which one is better, it's cheap, it has the good uptime, it's easy to use, it's reliable, it's consistent. I think I switched my web hosting twice for various reasons, like uptime and cost or something. And I think right now I'm using GoDaddy. I forgot what I pay or how much I pay each year, but I have covered it in this video. It's about how much I spend in a week. Uh, it's there somewhere in the video. It's a fun video, watch it if you like. There are quite a lot of things to do and think about, right, for your first portfolio. As a quick summary, I have covered the setup essentials for UX portfolio websites and presented five main categories of platforms slash tools for you to choose from. Depending on your situation and focuses, you might prefer one over the other. Whatever you choose is really just the beginning so that you can put your project up online and look at your own portfolio from the audience perspective so that you can refine and iterate. Maybe to just really quickly, really fast get you started, you just use Medium. Drop all your content, see what it looks like. When you feel like your project has a good flow, then you might decide to switch to Squarespace. Use a better templates so that you can have a more artsy vibe in your portfolio if that's what you're going for. Maybe after Squarespace, you really want to understand the technical side of things. You want to learn how to code, HTML, CSS, JavaScript so that you can communicate with engineers more effectively in the future. Then you can do it that way. So you will go for Medium, Squarespace, coding, just, just moving up the ladder. Who knows? Exactly, no one knows. Don't overthink what you might do in the future just to put your portfolio together first. In the next video, I will give you a sneak peek of my UX portfolio development process. How do I decide what to put on my portfolio and how do I put the projects together? How do I put them up? So stay tuned for the video next Sunday. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on the own. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!